Hello everyone, uh, the last dementia video that we did I spoke about what dementia is and what happens to the brain. In this video I want to speak more about um, the diagnosis of dementia, uh, how we get that and the, the process that we go through in order to achieve that. So because dementia has a lot of symptoms that are very very similar to other illnesses the first and most important thing we need to do is rule out any other conditions uh, we don't want to jump straight into a diagnosis of dementia uh, if there is actually an other underlying cause so depression is one of the other possibilities there are similar symptoms there are behavioral changes there are uh, physical changes that can come along with depression uh, also, drug interactions, uh, medications can have uh, various different side effects that can all have quite a big, big impact on how we behave and uh, again on our physical health as well. Thyroid problems, again other physical health problems so we need to make sure that that is not the case. Excessive use of alcohol either present or um, in the past can have uh, quite severe long-term effects so again we need to make sure that that's not the reason for the physical or mental health kind of changes that are taking place uh, and certain vitamin deficiencies as well can also cause similar uh, types of symptoms that could suggest dementia but may not necessarily be the case so that's kind of the first stage is ruling out other other things that it could be before getting to dementia then we look at the previous medical history. Uh, when we looked uh, in the previous video, there is potentially a genetic link. Uh, this is not 100%, but there can be an indication that if you have a family history of dementia, there's a likelihood that that could be the case. Uh, and also your own history as well. If you've had um, brain damage or trauma or anything like that, the, uh, the risks are higher. Significant events that may give rise, as we said, um, some sort of trauma to the brain or something that has occurred. Physical exam and blood tests, when we looked at what is dementia, we know there are certain uh, proteins that start develop to develop within the brain, so uh, we need to look at blood tests as well. Mini mental state evaluations, these are very, very effective methods for uh, identifying whether someone has dementia and uh, show you an example of a um, MMSE in just a moment. And imaging tests, uh, PET scans, CTs, anything like that, uh, what they do is they show brain damage, they show the um, shrinking of the brain and the deterioration uh, that, that could be there. And then all of these together, when they're completed, if they all indicate that um, there is damage there and they're all uh, correlating together that's when we can diagnose someone with dementia. So the uh, mini mental state uh, testing, so uh, I'll give you an example, if I ask anyone to draw uh, a clock at three o'clock, as a general rule anyone that I've ever asked to do this will do the same thing. So I'll have their clock face, I'll have their numbers, most people will draw the exact same thing. Um, if we go back to the historic ones uh, in my chart, they all look basically exactly the same. But when we ask someone with dementia to draw a clock face at three o'clock, often it will look something along the lines of this. So as you can see, it's almost there. Now we've got the full circle, except it doesn't actually meet at the edges. Now there's a small gap, they couldn't quite close it. And again, you've got the numbers and they do go round in a circle and match the outside of the face. But for some reason we've gone all the way up to 13 and it's not quite in the right place. And again with the hands, we know there are supposed to be two hands there, but they're not quite in the right place. So small tasks like that can indicate whether or not someone has dementia. There are medications which can help with dementia. It's quite a long list here. It is important to realise though that there is no medication which can cure dementia, it is not a curable disease. But it can slow the process, it can protect the brain just ever so slightly 
uh, and hopefully give that person a little bit more time um, and, and slow the process of the damage to the brain. When it comes to stages of uh, Alzheimer's and dementia, uh, it is individual for everyone. Each person will deteriorate in their own way, some very, very quickly, some uh, a lot slower. It does differentiate between um, Alzheimer's and vascular dementia and um, how they deteriorate is different as well. But as a general rule of thumb, these are the kinds of signs and symptoms that we'd be looking at um, in each part. So from in the early stages of the uh, diagnosis or the when the disease actually began, uh, approximately the first two to six years, we would be looking at uh, memory lapses. And it's important to recognise the difference between uh, a memory lapse that is a sign of dementia or a memory lapse which actually happens to all of us. So it's very, very common for uh, most of us to walk into a room, get there and think, what did I come in here for? The difference is what we can do is go back a few steps, start again, uh, and often it will come back to us, but that is much more unlikely for someone with dementia. They may forget familiar words. Uh, in the previous video when we looked at what happens to the brain and the um, neurons being blocked by proteins uh, preventing the chemical uh, reactions to take place and allowing the two neurons to communicate with each other, Familiar words that we've always known all of a sudden are clouded with proteins and that we can no longer access them. This will also cause confusion in familiar places. It will uh, cause the person to have trouble handling money and paying bills uh, and potentially cause mild mood and personality changes as well. Uh, effectively, uh, different stages of the brain are dying and it starts with the hippocampus which um, is where short-term memory is stored. So potentially you could have someone that might be able to tell you the name of their first school teacher and the name of their childhood best friend, but not be able to tell you what they had for dinner last night. In the middle stage, which can be anywhere between two to 10 years, so again, when we looked at the last one, it was two to six years, um, it is very, very individual per person. But in the, the middle stage, as we call it, uh, the person may start having problems recognising family and friends. They may uh, continuously repeat stories or words or motions. It is important here to remember that although it may be the first uh, the, or the hundredth time that that person has told you that story, to them it's still the first time that they've said it. So we must always remember to react like it's the first time we've heard it, even if we've already heard it 15 times in the last hour. Uh, they may have difficulty carrying out tasks that have multiple steps. So if you want someone to um, remain independent and complete um, tasks, if you think of something as simple as making a cup of tea, asking someone with dementia to go to the kitchen, get the mug, get the tea out, get the spoon, go to the fridge, get the milk, uh, bring it out and you'll be there in a minute, you will have lost that person, you will have lost them instantly. So it must be broken down into steps because otherwise that person's going to get confused. They don't have the ability to remember that many steps. So uh, one bit at a time can help us support someone with dementia. Uh, a lack of concern for hygiene and appearance as well uh, can also start occurring at this point. And that can be for a number of reasons. Uh, it can be uh, even down to believing that uh, they've already done that today. Uh, that they've already had a shower or maybe actually there's a, a fear of water somewhere that um, we've been able to rationalise and get over but now that the brain's being damaged that uh, rational thinking is no longer um, taking control there. And then in the late stage, um, this is when it uh, gets a lot more challenging for the, the individual and family and friends around them as well. So. Uh, there can be a complete loss of ability to recognise family, uh, but also oneself as well, which means uh, mirrors can be a very, very terrifying thing for someone with dementia. Um, if you imagine looking into your mirror and not being able to recognise who you see uh, looking back at you. A complete loss of ability to communicate, as well as bladder and bowel control gone, 
Uh, and it's at this point we would really start to be looking at end of life support. Uh, we will include uh, a couple of links uh, for you to watch, uh, which do give a, a good indication of actually what it's like uh, for that person. Because as, although it's very challenging for family and friends to see that, to not be recognised by uh, the loved one, the fear for the individual and confusion and lack of understanding is much, uh, much more overwhelming.